My background was in fine dining uh, in Los Angeles. I worked for a, a chef named Wolfgang Puck at a famous restaurant called Spago, and uh, I was uh, on the I was on the table side, you know, farm to table. We had all the best produce you can imagine, uh, the best honeys, and I just kind of got interested on um, where food was coming from. That was my initial interest when I talked to uh, Dr. Bushoven uh, to come here. Uh, but then he's the one that, when he found out I was a beekeeper, he said, "Hey, why don't we do something with bees and almonds?" Almond trees are 100% uh, reliant on uh, bees for pollination, uh, mostly honeybees. There's one million acres under cultivation right now, and they need two two hives per acre for to get a proper fruit set. So we're talking 1.7 million hives are in California right now, 40 billion bees. It's the largest uh, controlled pollination effort in the world. These boxes each can hold about 12,000 bees, so there could be as many as 24, 20 to 24,000 bees. And by the time the almonds are done, there will it'll be pushing. 24,000. Four to six weeks would be the top, the top, and then uh, the beekeepers have to move the bees, some to citrus, plums, apricot, uh, uh, cherry, uh, they have to move on. Pollen is the uh, major uh, source of protein for bees, and nectar is their uh, major source of carbohydrate, and they use nectar to make honey. So uh, if, if they're not getting pollen or nectar, they need sugar syrup and uh, pollen cakes, uh, which is kind of a a cliff bar for, for bees. There's about 500,000 hives that stay in California and they bring in one over one million uh, from as far away as Florida. One of the theories is that bees are stressed from being uh, migrating from say Florida to here thousands of miles. We did planted alternate forage crops that bl bloom prior to almonds so they get natural food uh, prior to almonds which is uh, important to their uh, overall health and stress. With almonds in February, it, it creates tremendous growth in the colonies, and that allows beekeepers to split those hives and double their numbers uh, for their traditional honey flow in, say, like North Dakota. Uh, one third of their bees will stay in California uh, for citrus. With the exception of uh, clementines, uh, they, they'll move their bees into uh, uh, whatever's blooming in citrus, uh, mostly for the nectar, so they get uh, their first honey flow of, uh, of citrus honey. And then the other two thirds will find their way up through uh, apples into Washington. And then uh, almost in June, they'll go uh, to North Dakota for yellow clover. Honey used to be the main business. Now pollination is. Uh, 12 years ago, the average price for one of these hives was $40 to rent. Uh, now, and that meaning means the farmer pays the beekeeper to rent them. Now this hive, probably, I don't know the contract here, but probably $175. These bees are uh, from Hyatt Honey, uh, who also supplied my bees uh, for my study. These are Italian bees. Um, they are uh, bred to be docile. Uh, they are prolific producers of honey, uh, which is one of the reasons uh, they are uh, desired, but they're extremely mellow because you need to be able to inspect these hives. You need to be able to pop them. And normally you'd have a little smoker, but the Italian bees are so mellow, you can actually do a lot of work without the smoke, which it just makes it that much easier for a beekeeper. The foraging part is really important because uh, one of the problems with bees is colony collapse disorder. Uh, in 2006, people were discovering they would open their hive and see that there was only the queen and the nurse bees. A third or half of the hive was gone, uh, sometimes two thirds of the hive. And those were the foragers. So, uh, we got into the, uh, there were a number of theories or speculations and uh, we decided to focus on natural forage that would bloom before almonds so we could measure that versus what everyone else had to feed the bees, which is the, the, the uh, supplemental feed. And um, we got some good data. First year was difficult. We, it was what we call a non-irrigated trial because as you can see behind me, the, uh, the trees have uh, drip lines and micro sprinklers. Uh, so in between the trees there is not much growing because they don't want anything outside the root zone of the tree so we had a non-irrigated trial and of course last year was uh, a drought very bad so it affected our bloom we had a very poor percentage of germination we scaled back uh, the the study the last one was on four different orchards uh, that were hundreds of miles apart uh, because they had to be in large orchards uh, because bees fly up to two miles so we needed to separate our treatments by two miles and but this year we did one trial uh, without replication on campus and then with a control in Madeira and it's always irrigated uh, so we got 
a very good uh, uh, percentage of germination, which allowed us to get actual data on on how the bees were collecting pollen uh, and collecting the actual alternate forage. Last year we had three trials. We had kufia, which was a uh, oil seed crop uh, that they've been testing in Minnesota. We had boraj, uh, which is a, uh, a wonderful uh, flower that bees love. And then uh, there was rapini, which is uh, a, uh, uh, in the broccoli family, uh, has a beautiful yellow uh, uh, flower head. That is in the, is in the brassica families and that it was our ace in the hole because that blooms in January no matter what. The kufia turned out to be a long day plant that had no interest in blooming in, or ger germinating at all in the winter. Uh, the borage uh, germinated, uh, did very well but di unfortunately didn't get that pre-bloom. It got it became what we called a concurrent bloom. It came midway through almonds so we did get a little data there on um, the, the bees taking in borage. Uh, as almonds petered out. Um, and then rapini was great. Uh, that also was a, more of a concurrent bloom last year. This year was pre-bloom, same, th same with the borage. Um, the literature shows that um, bees, once a big source like almonds bloom, uh, they only they go where the money is. So they only go after the almonds. Bees are front and center, uh, which is a wonderful thing. I, I, I can't tell you how many people you know, uh, just regular people when they see my truck, uh, my truck has my company's name on it. They always want to talk about the bees. Every, everyone seems to know about the bees. The most fun is what we're doing right now, standing out outside in an orchard like this. It's so beautiful, it's like it's snowing. I grew up near orchards when I, uh, near San Jose. It's, it's actually, I've come full circle. I, I loved being in orchards when I was a kid and uh, I was on a wayward journey, but now I'm, I'm back in the orchards.